The work of a historian is neither linear nor absolute. Every journey into the archives begins a new act of discovery, frustration, and sometimes extreme emotion. The work we embark upon is personal, as much as it is professional. Thus, I ask you to journey with me back to a place where my journey as a historian began. Let's go back to Oxford. Here we are, back in Oxford, back in the place where it all started. I am here with Danny, and we are here for a little research trip. I'm going to the archives, but Miss Danny I'm is heading to the Pitt Rivers Museum, a dream come true. She's heading to the museums today, but we have a couple days in Oxford. I have been wanting to come back ever since. COVID when I was supposed to be doing my dissertation research in the archives here back when I was getting my master's. Didn't get to do it because of a global pandemic, but now we are back. We're able to do the research now. So we're just going to have a nice couple of days back in Oxford. all of the other days when I was a student here by heading down to Little Clarendon Street for a bit of breakfast. They opened this new cafe that wasn't here when I was a student, but they had such incredible treats for breakfast. So we got these custard filled cruffins and I got a chai latte and it was just so nourishing and delicious. And then it was time to take me back to the flat and prepare for my day in the archive. We have had breakfast and Danny is off to the Pitts Rivers Museum and I am heading into the archive. I am a tiny bit apprehensive and I'm not entirely sure how I'm feeling about it because the last time I was in the archive was back in 2019 and I had a rather difficult experience with the professor here. If you want to know more about it, you can look at my other videos, but I've not been back since and I have not been back since COVID. And so while I'm really excited to look at these documents, the same documents that have been cited by so many historians, I'm a little apprehensive, but this is what I came here to do. And so we're gonna go into the archive. I'm gonna share my thoughts and how I'm feeling and let's go look at some documents. Emotions are a tricky and difficult thing, as is memory. When I woke up that morning to head to the archives, I felt quite cavalier about the experience. I felt like so many years had passed and that the memories of my difficult time in the archives with a certain professor would not have an impact on my work. However, that morning, as I got ready to head into the archive, I immediately started feeling anxious and almost considered canceling my appointment. I remember exactly where I sat the first time I entered the Weston Library. I remember the feelings of being trapped. I remember the emotions and the immediate panic of wanting to leave. When I was an undergraduate and experienced going to an archive for the first time, it was joyous. It was an adventure. It was an opportunity to open the cover to the past. That feeling of belonging and calm and excitement was lost in 2019. And ever since, I've been trying to reconnect with the archive and my research and find new ways to engage with the archive and to make this experience my own. The first document that I pulled this day was the Tanner Manuscript. It is a document that has been cited by many historians, and for the first 40 or so pages, I was finding nothing. I became very frustrated because most of the documents that I was seeing were wills and testaments, and I was looking for records from the House of Commons. 
I was just feeling so defeated and was nearing the point when I was going to give up. But then something unexpected happened. A student that was sitting across the room left me a note saying that she was somebody who watches my YouTube videos. It was this little reminder that my documenting my experiences had connected with someone else that really turned it around. And that's when I found it. The document I was looking for. An act of parliament that was never actually enacted into law. History as we know it says that a law of slavery was never positively enacted in England. But this is proof that parliament had intended to. It is these misconceptions about the history of slavery that I hope to rectify and revise as I write my dissertation. Today was an incredibly emotional and difficult day in the archive. However, being able to find this document and to share my findings with you all makes it all worth it. Afterward, I headed over to Blackwell's to treat myself to a little book shopping. This is one of my favorite spots in Oxford, especially because it has one of the best historical fiction sections. It is also a really great place to peruse and then grab a few books, sit, and contemplate. By the end of my Blackwell's excursion, I walk away with The Historian by Elizabeth Castova, a copy of The Lord of the Rings, and head over to The Missing Bean to do a little bit of reading of the secret history. home now and I'm getting some nice emotional support cuddles from my moosef and I just wanted to have a little check-in. I know I probably did the voiceover to give you the rundown of how today went. Today was a difficult one but today was difficult and I I had thought when I was heading to the archive that it wasn't going to be a big deal and that I was going to feel fine about it. But once I got inside, I just started having all of these memories and flashbacks and it was just really hard to be there. But got the document and I really felt like I wanted to quit. I flipped through the first couple of pages and they were all just wills and testaments. And I thought maybe I had called up the wrong document or that I just wasn't looking in the right place. And then I got that note from that girl. And that's when everything turned around and it got a lot better. And I went to a cafe afterward and just did some reflecting. I wrote in my little dissertation diary that for my prospectus and as I've been developing my theory around archival practice, I've constantly talked about how the archive is this weird kind of sterile, quiet space of violence and discomfort. And that the people that I come across in the record and the types of documents I look at only exist because slavery existed. But I hadn't realized that it is also a site of where I experienced harassment and my own experiences with sexual violence. And so I hadn't quite made the connection until today. And it was really difficult, but I'm really glad that I went and that I stayed I found a record that is 
super important for my research. And I just felt reinvigorated being back at Oxford. It makes me so reflective and sad because I just felt like the kind of student and scholar that I really wanted to be when I was here. And I was so focused and energized and I felt like I had community and I just felt so connected to the work. And I just feel like since I've been at Yale, I've kind of lost that. I don't have my community in the same way. And I just never have felt like the connection. And I've never really felt the connection to Yale. Whereas for some reason when I'm here, I just feel so inspired. And I think that's partially the nostalgia. But I also think that I just feel really connected to this space in a different way than I do at my now home institution. Those are my thoughts. And I'm going to go ahead and do some reading and just hang out and try to decompress. It's been a very taxing couple of days. And today in particular was just a little challenging, but I'm so glad that I came back. And I'm so glad that I have Musif here with me. And I'm so glad that I get to document this process with you all because today was a mix of emotions and I'm really glad that I have a way of documenting and, and sharing these moments because I know that I'm going to finish this dissertation and I'm going to look back and want to remember all of these moments, all of these ups and downs. And I'm just very grateful for this YouTube channel right now. And so I'm going to go read, go to bed. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, friends. Mm -hmm. morning it is an overcast day here in Oxford and we are heading off to go grab some breakfast I opted to just wear a sweatshirt today because I was feeling a little lazy and it's also just dreary so we're grabbing breakfast at Rose Cafe and then heading to the archives and Danny is gonna head to the Ashmolean and then we're gonna meet up in the afternoon and we're gonna go study in the library because we'll both have the reader card. So that is our plan for today. And we're going to take you along for another exciting day in the life of a historian in training. less anxious this day after having been in the archive the day before. I had called up a couple of different documents that I wasn't quite sure about. I hadn't seen other historians reference them, but I had just sourced them based on my search criteria. The first document I pulled was on English history, and it actually ended up being a document that had various notes on 
Roman history in England. So it wasn't super relevant to my research, but that is often what happens in the archive is that especially when you're looking up documents that have not been cited by other historians, you aren't quite sure what you're going to find, but that's part of the process. It's all about finding that needle in a haystack that might point you in the direction that offers some kind of insight for your dissertation. This is what new research is all about. It's going into the archive and using the search material that you think might point you in the right direction and often finding that what you pulled has absolutely no relevance to your research. But regardless, it is such a wonder getting to open these manuscripts that were written in the 17th century and getting to take a closer look. Since starting a PhD during a pandemic, I will admit that my connection to the research and my interest in a profession as a historian has had its ups and its downs. However, now that I'm finally getting to engage in the research that I began as an undergraduate and that I've spent all of these years preparing for, I feel reinvigorated and feel so excited to just be able to do this work and to see what it is that the archive is pointing me to. Well, the archive was a bit of a bust today. Did not find anything worthwhile for the research. I did see some really cool letters though that had nothing to do with my research, but I found them interesting. And since I am here and have my reader's card, I figured I might as well go get a little bit of work done in the rad camp. I haven't been back in the rad camp since I was a student here. So I'm excited to go back. Just walking through the Audley and Quad over to the rad camp and get a little bit of work done and jot down some of my thoughts and also see if I can work on transcribing the documents from yesterday. It's going to be a long and tedious project. 17th century handwriting is not easy. such a surreal experience. I just remember the days that I used to come here with my friend James and study as we began our classes in Michaelmas term and I was just having so much fun getting to dig back into my research and fall back in love with the work I do as a history PhD. I was also really glad that Danny was with me so that way I had somebody to study with and Return to the good old times when I used to be able to study at a beautiful university like Oxford rather than in my apartment in London. That is it for today's vlog. I hope that you enjoyed this episode three of the Dissertation Diaries. I'll see you all next time.